Let's move on to 7.2, potential energy. Um, so let's begin here. It says, in any collision or interaction, uh, there's a part of the converted kinetic energy that is temporarily stored in reversible changes, okay, in the physical state, and is then converted back to kinetic energy, okay? So we, we saw this already in an elastic collision, even in, a, in, an elast in an inelastic collision. There's a part of the converted kinetic energy that is stored in reversible changes. Okay? And this, this converted kinetic energy can be converted back to, con to kinetic energy after the interaction. So remember the two objects collide um, during this, this collision. Remember at some point their velocities are the same, which means that the, some of the, the kinetic energy has been converted into internal energy because these objects have deformed temporarily. In that deformation, we have stored some energy. Okay, this, this stored energy that we can convert back to kinetic energy is called potential energy. Okay, and it's represented by U and it is a form of it internal energy. Okay, so let's, let's look at pictures. I love pictures. So here we have a cart and a spring. If we look at the kinetic energy and the internal energy, Right, the cart's moving towards the spring, the cart compresses the spring, um, but there's still, there's still the velocity of the cart. Then at some point the cart has a zero velocity and then the spring begins to restore, uh, be restored back to its original position. So, at this point you've got kinetic energy, no internal energy, okay? However, during this time, the kinetic energy drops because the velocity has dropped, but the internal energy in the spring has increased, right? The potential energy in the spring has increased, okay? Then at, at when the velocity is zero, you have reached the maximum potential energy that you could store in the spring, okay? And the kinetic energy is, is then zero and then it begins to res be restored and convert that potential energy back into kinetic energy. So as you can see, the potential energy now begins to drop and the kinetic energy begins to rise. Okay? And now we have all of that kinetic energy back in the cart and we have zero potential energy in the spring. Okay? So it says here, throughout the interaction between the cart and the spring, this is important, the sum of the kinetic energy and the potential energy of the closed cart spring system is constant. Okay? So I think we get the idea is that potential energy means you're storing energy to be used. Um, you are conserving energy. Okay? So you are, you are storing energy as potential energy. Now, this is, a, this is a good point. How and where is energy stored as potential energy? Okay, it is stored in reversible. Guys, I want to just repeat this word, reversible. We saw it earlier. Reversible changes. Meaning you can get that energy back. You can reverse it. Okay? But it's, uh, it's stored in reversible changes in something called the configuration state of the system. This configuration state simply means the way interacting objects arrange themselves spatially. Okay, what do we mean by that? Well, let's look at two examples here. The one is gravitational potential energy and the other one is elastic potential energy. We already saw elastic potential energy here in the spring. Okay? 
So let's look at gravitational potential energy. If you take an object and you raise it up, you raise it up to this height, okay? There is something called, uh, let's call this a boulder, okay? So like a big rock or a brick or something. Now you have a boulder earth system. There's the earth, believe it or not. So this is your boulder earth system, okay? And the configuration state is the way these interacting objects arrange themselves. So, of course, as you raise this boulder, the potential energy increases because the potential energy, gravitational potential energy, is a function of the arrangement, spatial arrangement. I hope I'm getting, I'm getting it through. The spatial arrangement, the, the way that these are arranged in space, this this height here, this x, or this whatever you want to call it, height, h, okay? The potential energy, the higher this goes, the higher the potential energy. What about the elastic potential energy? Okay, if you take a ball, or you take that spring, and you compress it, or you compress this ball, you are changing the configuration state of the atoms, the way the atoms are arranging themselves spatially. Okay? And if you squeeze them, then, then you're changing the spatial arrangement and you're increasing the potential energy. Just like a spring, when you squeeze it, you're increasing the potential energy and so you're storing energy in the spring and if you let, let the spring go, it's going to move that way. Or if you stretch the spring, you are also storing energy in the spring so that it wants to move back. Okay? All right. So we know that another important thing is that, ignore this for now, um, we know that if you throw a ball up, it has kinetic energy in the beginning, maximum kinetic energy. It goes all the way to the top and it has maximum potential energy. And then because it's conserved, all of that potential energy can then be reconverted back into kinetic energy. And we know that it's conserved and it's a reversible change. Okay, so potential energy is the form of internal energy, form of internal energy associated with what? Reversible changes. It can re be reversed, okay? in the configuration state of an object or system. Potential energy can be converted entirely to kinetic energy. Okay. All right. We'll maybe do an example in the next one.